Hello and welcome back to the Code Circus. Today we are going to look at some of those string operators that we talked about in the last video. So let's dive right into our code here. So we have two ways of working with code here in Python. We can work directly with our interactive shell where we type in commands and Python executes them or we could run programs like we've been doing. Now one of the things I did was to comment out using the pound sign in front of viz.go and our environment setup where we add that to our environment in order to make our programs load a lot faster so that way we don't actually load the 3D environment and we can do some experiments with the strings right inside of the Python program. We could also do these kinds of experiments right inside of the shell. And we'll do a little bit of both so you can see how they work. The first thing I wanted to look at is how to use a method that affects our string. So I have my message here called my, my, my message and I print it out on the screen and we can see when we run that it prints my message hello world onto the screen. But if I wanted to change my message using a method that lowers all of the case to lowercase, like this. If I said my message dot lower and run this, nothing is going to happen on the screen. And in fact, the original message does not change. It still stays the same as my message. If I wanted to display my message in lowercase, I have to print it on the screen. and then run it. And now you see what it has done. It has changed all of my text to lowercase for me. Now the other thing I want to be able to do is maybe store that information and save it for later. So I can do that by creating another variable if I would like. My message lower. And assign that my message and call the method lower. And you notice as soon as I type my message, I get this drop down that includes all of the different possible options to use for string methods. So you can explore that and see all the different kinds of things that you can do. This is just one example of the things that you could do. And we'll look at a couple others. So now what is stored is my message lower in that variable name is the lowercase version of my message. And again, I'm going to print it out. And run it. And you can see that I get hello world. I printed out the method call to hello world for my method um, message lower. And then I printed out the stored version of my message written in lowercase. Now we could also do this down here in the interactive panel. So I have to set up a new variable because these two things are separate. It's separate from the code. I'm just going to say hi just to prove that. So I said my message is hi. And if I say my message dot lower, it's different in the interaction panel in the in the shell here. It, it will say the result of that on the screen without a print statement. It's just displaying what is stored in there. We saw last time when we did that without a print statement, though, it does not deal with the escape characters. It's not actually processing the print onto the screen. It's just saying what is stored inside of that variable. And in this case, it's saying what is returned by that method. So for the most part, it, it's better to stick within the code if you actually want to see what the results would be printed on the screen as if a user would see it if they were running your program. So we're going to do a lot of it up here in this code window. I'm going to clear this. We also have an uppercase as well. So we have a lowercase and an uppercase. Now sometimes it's useful to know how many characters are part of a string. So there's a method to do that and I'm going to print out the result again. 
like we did before. And I'm, it's called length. And it will print out the length of my message onto the screen when I run this. And I can see that there are 11 characters in my message. Now, the way the message is indexed, in other words, the way we count it, is starting at 0 and going all the way up through 10. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 11 characters, but it only counts from 0 to 10. One of the other cool things I can do is I can take my message and split it up based upon a particular character. In this case, we're going to use the space. And it gives me a new data type that we haven't looked at before. So I'm going to print this out. And again, I'm not storing the information. I'm just going to print it out. I'm not actually changing my message. So I'm going to do my message dot split. And I'm going to split it on a space. Now when I run this, it gives me what's called a list, which tells me each string separated like you would like a shopping list. We're going to deal a lot more with lists later on in a separate lesson, but I just wanted to show you that. Now one of the things that we have to be careful of is splitting is if I put in multiple spaces, sometimes Python gets confused uh, with that. So if I wanted to do like a tab, I could split on a tab, but I couldn't just use a space bar and tab five spaces. I have to use the escape character and split on the tab escape character, which would be a backslash T. Or if I wanted to split on a new line, same kind of thing. I'd have to search for a new line escape character, which would be a backslash N. But we can do more of that as we dive into um, more complicated strings. We're just kind of introducing this for right now. We can replace parts of a string using a dot replace method. So I can print my message dot replace. And let's say I want to replace all of the O's. So I got to say what I'm going to replace. Actually, let's just replace an entire word. Let's replace world with the word class. And what it'll do is it will print out my message when I run this. And I'll say hello class now instead of hello world. Let's get rid of some of this extra things here. There we go. Still have our message. If I wanted to save that, I could do one of two things. I could create a new variable, my new message, and assign it the result of that replacement. I'm just going to copy this for me. And then print it out. Like that. That's one option. And you can see I have my new message. Or I could assign my original message back to this new version of my message. Now, this brings up a really important thing for us to pay attention to. The equal symbol in mathematics deals with equality, where we're comparing one thing to another. Like x plus 1 equals 10 is a comparison of equality. In Python and many, many other programming languages, the equal sign does not mean that. The equal sign means a sign, where we place one thing inside of another. So we're, if we're reading line 11 here, it says, my message is assigned my message where we replace the word world with the word class. So when we print out my message now, it will be my cl uh, hello class rather than hello world. And we can see that it's printing it out for the third time. We can get these, let's get rid of these extra print statements. So we can see it just doing that. And we can see it's just printing out hello class. Whereas before, if we do it immediately, before that statement, and print it out, 
we can see it says hello world. So we've actually changed the value of my message and reassigned it. Now, there are some other ways of dealing with strings. Uh, we can index the individual characters of a string just by printing them out and using the brackets and addressing the individual characters of the string. So if I print out my message 2, it's going to print out the second character, which is the letter L. But you might say, wait, why is it printing out L? Well, because remember, it's indexed starting at 0. So we're counting 0, 1, 2. So that would be H-E-L, 0, 1, 2. That would be the third character in, actually, not the second character in. So we have to be careful and make sure we pay attention to the way that Python indexes these strings. One other way of dealing with these strings is you can print out a section of the string called slicing. So we can say print my message and instead of just printing one index we can print starting at let's say character 0 going to character 3 indexed and counting by ones. Now we're going to talk a lot more about this structure of kind of looping through something as we go forward because this is used in many 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 parts of Python this structure but this is the start the 3 tells us where to stop but it's not going to include the index of 3 it's going to do 0 1 and 2 but not include the 3 and the 1 again tells us how many characters to count by so when I run this we can see that we're just going to get HEL not the second L so it's 0 1 and 2 which is just the HEL one fun thing that we can do, which we'll talk more about why this works this way, is if I ignore the start and ignore the stop and count backwards by minus 1, I can print my message backwards. So that's fun to do. We'll talk more about why that works that way when we dive more into that structure, but you can see I printed my message backwards. So that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have some fun experimenting with some of those things. Try out some of this, the methods uh, for the string class that we haven't dove into by just using that dropdown. I'll see you next time.